Hi, in this series of videos we're going to be looking at GCSE Maths Walkthrough. Each of the playlists is going to be about four or five videos. Each video will be about 20 minutes long. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. If you do need any help, please add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Hi, this is the fourth video in the playlist where we're looking at the Edexcel November 2018 paper one for the higher tier. Um, this starts at question number 18 after we finished in the previous video at question number 17. Um, these questions are going to be a little bit challenging, so I'm going to leave this video to about 20 minutes or so, but it should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. Please do stop the video. Have a go at each of the questions. OK, so um, number 18 here, we're asked to on the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals function of x minus 2. Well, when the, the x uh, values uh, minus 2, they actually move along towards the right. So um, it's going to move along to the right. This value is going to move along to the right two places. And this value is going to move along to the right two places. This value two places. OK, and hopefully you can see that I'm getting a curve at the bottom here. I'll just try my best to kind of move this one along two places, this one along two places. OK, so hopefully it will give you a reasonably smooth curve on the video. And there we go. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you. Part B then is it says um, on the grid, the graph A is being reflected to give graph B. The equation of graph A is that right down the equation of graph B. OK, well, uh, transformation of graphs is a topic all of its own. So please do have a look at the channel and there are some playlists on that. OK, so what you're looking for for this is that Y is equals the G of minus X. OK, and that would give you one mark each for each of those questions. OK, so they're kind of right or wrong type questions. You're just going to get one mark for each of them. OK, let's move on then to uh, question number 19, which is a functions question. OK, so uh, I do get quite a lot of requests with tutoring for functions uh, revisions. So this is something that uh, perhaps you might want to just have a look at the playlists and it will give you um, quite a bit more uh, examples for you to work through. So it says for all the values of x, uh, we've got um, f of x equals x plus 1 squared and g of x equals that. Show that gf of x equals 2x, x plus 2. Oh, OK, all right. So let's have a go at just figuring out the gf of x. OK, this is a bit like um, back in primary school, you would have done sort of things like number machines. OK, this is a bit like that, where we're taking values of x and we're running through either f functions or g functions. OK, so if you have a look at the playlist, it will give you further details on this. So what we're saying then, if we take the gf of x, we're actually taking the function of x, which is this one, and we're plugging it into here. So rather than writing uh, g of x as two brackets x minus one, we're going to just substitute this first x for this value. So I'm going to write x plus one squared, OK, which is that plugged into there. OK, and then we've got minus one close brackets. And then really it's a case of just manipulating that so it looks like this. OK, so let's expand that out and see what happens. I'm going to expand out the middle bit first. I'm going to have x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. Uh, again, minus 1, close the brackets. OK, so 2 times. OK, so in there I'm going to have x squared plus 2x plus 2. x squared plus 2x. Sorry, not plus 2, plus 1. <laughs> sorry. OK, and then minus 1. So let's have a look then. When we get rid of those brackets, uh, this is actually internal brackets there. So when we get rid of um, these brackets inside here, I'm going to get two times. Um, I'm going to get x squared plus 2x 
take away this plus one and minus one, they cancel themselves out, and therefore I get that. Now, it's not quite the same as they're asking us. All we need to do is we need to factorise this for x as well. So it's going to get you 2x, x plus 2. That's it. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. It's really just a case of sort of working through these things. OK, so let's have a look then at um, find the inverse function of g um, and then use that to figure out what the value is when you plug 7 in. OK, so let's look at first the inverse function. So at the moment, um, I've got g as or oh, the g function is equal to 2 times x minus 1. OK, well, it's going to be a little bit easier if I just expand those brackets. So I'm going to write this as gx equals 2x minus 2. OK, now there is a technique. Uh, and again, if you have a look on the playlist uh, separately to this, it'll give you the technique through. And the way we do this is we, we kind of change this g of x to y. And then we've got 2x minus 2. And what we need to do is make x the subject of this. So I'm going to bring this minus 2 over to the other side by adding 2 to both sides. And I'm going to get y plus 2 equals 2x. I'm then going to divide through by 2. So I'm going to get x equals y plus 2 divided by 2. OK. And then... Um, that's that's kind of made x the subject of this. And what we need to do then is just move everything back. So what we do is rather than writing um, x, we write it as the inverse function. OK, I'm going to swap things around just because it's easier to read. And then rather than writing y, I'm going to put that back to x plus 2 over 2. And that's it, really. And then it's a case of taking the value of um, uh, 7 and plugging it into this formula. So uh, g to the minus 1 of 7 is going to be equal to 7 plus 2 divided by 2, which is going to be um, 4.5, isn't it? So that's going to equal 4.5. And that would be the answer to that particular question. So it's this technique of making... Um, this equivalent to y and then making x the subject of the formula and then swapping it back again. OK, so hopefully that's all right for you and you were able to follow that technique. But as I mentioned, please do have a look at the playlist on functions. OK, so uh, we're going to move on to question 20. I'm just going to keep an eye on the time because things are going to get a little bit trickier from here on in, but we'll see how we get on. So this one is um, changing an algebraic expression or a SIRS expression um, into a different form. OK, so this is going to take a little bit of time to work through, but we'll have a go at it. Now, if I look at the answer, I've actually got root 2 in there. So it kind of makes sense to initially at least change these two numbers so that we have a root 2 in them. So what I can do is I can say, well, actually, root 18 is exactly the same, saying root 9 times root 2, which is 3 root 2. OK. So it just gives you a little bit of a start, OK? Makes things just a little bit easier. And similarly with root 8, well, I can write that as root 4 times root 2. Well, that then will become 2 root 2. So now I've got everything out in a kind of a root 2 format. And it just makes my life possibly a little bit easier. I'm not entirely sure it will, but possibly. So let's change this. And I can write that as 3 root 2 plus root 2. Well, that's good because that's 4 root 2 squared. OK, and I'll write that all out in a minute for you. The bottom one, I'm going to write that as... Um, 2 root 2 minus 2. OK, well, the top, as I mentioned, you've got 3 root 2 plus root 2 is going to equal 4 root 2. And I'm going to square that. I'm going to divide that by 2 root 2 minus 2. 
Okay, so let's have a look at what this becomes when you square it. Well, when you square it, you're going to get uh, basically four root two times four root two. Again, all divided by two root two minus two. Well, four times four is 16 and root two times root two is gonna be two. So it's actually 16 times two. So what I'm gonna get at the very top is gonna to be equal to 32 because it's 16 times two. And then at the bottom, I haven't done anything really with this bottom bit as yet, although we're gonna rectify that now. Okay, so my problem is, is that now I've got this denominator. So I've sort of worked everything out at the top. I've got this denominator to deal with and it's got a third in it and it's just very untidy. So what I'm gonna do, if I multiply it by its kind of opposite plus two, then what will happen is that hopefully things will kind of cancel out and you should be able to end up with a whole number. They call it rationalizing the denominator. So again, if you have a look on the channel, there are some playlists, I think, that have got these sorts of questions in them. However, because I've multiplied the bottom by two root two plus two, I need to multiply the top by two root two plus two. Okay, so let's uh, work that out and see where we get. All right, so at the top, I've got 32 times 2 root 2 plus 2. Well, that's relatively straightforward. 32 times 2 root 2 is going to be 64 root 2. And then 32 times 2 is going to be plus 64. OK, uh, numbers are a bit big, but, you know, let's see where we end up. OK, so the bottom I've got 2 root 2 times 2 root 2. Well, that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4. So two times two is four, and root two times root two is two. So it's four times two, and that's gonna give me eight, okay? Then I've got two root two times plus two is plus four root two, minus two times uh, two root two is minus four root two. So I'm gonna get rid of these in the middle there, which is brilliant, because I don't want them there. Okay, then I've got minus two times plus two, well, that's gonna give me minus four. All right, so let's now just tidy this up a little bit. So what I'll end up with is gonna be 64 root two plus 64, all divided by eight minus four, which is four. All right. Now, as I'm sure you appreciate, this four is divisible into each of these. So I could write this as 64 root 2 over 4 plus 64 over 4. And as you know, 64 divided by 4, 16 times. So what I actually end up with is 16 root 2 plus 16, okay? Now, if we go back to the original question, what it says is written in the form A multiplied by something plus root two. Okay, well, hopefully you can see from what I've written here that now all I need to do is factorize it by 16, and I'm gonna get 16 times root two plus one, OK, and all I need to do is just swap these two terms around. I'm going to get 16 times 1 plus root 2, which is the form that they've asked us to write it in. OK, a little bit of a tough one. Um, the next one is even tougher, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry about the next one. The next one is a very awful one. But I think um, I'm sort of in two minds as to whether to carry on with it. Shall we give it a go? Yeah, go on then, because we're 13 minutes into the video. So we might as well do uh, the next question. And then the one afterwards, I think I'll just do as a separate, entirely separate video. So let's go with uh, working with vectors, which is question number 21. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time to work through. So I'll do my best to kind of explain it as we get along. If you're not familiar with vectors, you probably wouldn't be wise to be doing this one. You probably need to have a look at some of the other videos on the other playlists. OK. The, the issue really with this particular question is that actually we need to get as much information as we possibly can. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do first is at the moment I've got OP to PM is 3 to 2. So OP to PM is 3 to 2. Okay, well, that's all right. So what I can say then is OP is 3 fifths of the way and this is 2 fifths of the way. Okay, I'm also told that vector OA is A. Well, that's all right. Put that in there. Okay, and vector OB is B. So that's one over here. Okay, make that whole one over there. All right, now I've now got bits and pieces that I can start to put together. Now, what I think with these sorts of questions, it kind of works in your favor to get as much information about all the different vectors as you possibly can. So what I'm gonna do first is start with some fairly straightforward ones. I'm gonna look at vector A, B. Okay, so if I want vector A, B, um, I don't know anything about AB, but I do know I can go vector AO plus vector OB. Okay, well, AO is going to be minus A, OB is going to be B, so vector AB is going to be equal to B minus A. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully everybody's happy with that. That's not too bad. All right, let's have a look then at uh, vector OM. Okay, now the reason I want to do that is because I know that M is the midpoint of AB. Well, again, that's relatively straightforward. So if I want to know that vector, what I can say is that um, I wonder if I can write this um, at the very top here. Okay, so if I want to know vector OM, it's going to be equal to vector OA. Uh, sorry, uh, vector OM, yeah, OA plus a half of AB because it's the midpoint. So I can write that out as vector OM equals OA plus AM. That's going to be equal to OA is A. And vector OM is going to be a half of vector AB. OK, well, I've already worked out A, B, so therefore I can start to put a little bit of information into this. I've got A plus a half and vector A, B, we've worked out as B minus A. OK, so let's expand out those brackets and I'm going to get OM equals A plus a half of B minus a half of A. So vector OM is going to be equal to a minus a half of a, which is a half of a, plus a half of b. So I've got two vectors, okay, I've got om and ab. So now I've got those, I can start to really focus a little bit more on the question itself, op and pm. Well, what I need to know is firstly, what is op? Okay, well, op is going to be three fifths of OM. Well, that's all right, isn't it? So I can do that. So vector OP is going to be equal to three fifths of vector OM. OK, so I know OM is a half A plus a half B, and I know that um, I need three fifths of that. So I'm going to write that out, three fifths brackets, a half A plus a half B. OK, so let's just expand that out a little bit more. So hopefully you're able to follow all of this. I do understand and appreciate that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but, you know, hopefully uh, for some people, this will be it'll be useful to kind of work through. So vector OP, three fifths times a half. Well, that's going to give me three tenths of A plus three fifths time a half is three tenths of B. So now I've got vector OP. So I've got three vectors, AB, OM and OP. Right. My final little bit that I'm going to work out is going to be vector AP. OK, so vector AP is going to be this one. So I've got OP. I want AP, which is this one down here. OK, well, what do I know about it? Well, AP is going to be 
AO plus OP. Okay, so again, I can use that information. So vector um, AP is going to be equal to vector um, AO plus vector OP. And it's going to get a little bit complicated at this point, but hopefully we'll be able to follow each of these. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. Well, AO is minus A. And OP, we've said, is going to be 3 tenths of A plus 3 tenths of B. So that's going to equal then 3 tenths of B um, minus 7 tenths of A. So that's going to be 3 tenths of B minus 7 tenths of A. Hopefully you're OK with that. So let's just have a little bit of a recap. So what we've got then is I've got vector AP. I've worked out vector OP. Um, I've worked out vector AB. And I've worked out vector OM. So now we've kind of got everything, all the sort of ducks in a row, everything in place to be able to then work through working out the ratio ON to NB. OK, so the reason we can do that is if we look at vector a n. OK, so vector a n. And remember, we're interested in um, o n. So we need a n. We need to know quite a bit about that vector. What we're saying is, is that a n is something multiplied by a p. OK, we know AP and it's going to be something because even in a straight line, it's going to be something multiplied by AP. OK, so let's have a look at that then. So let's have a look at vector AN. Equals, I'm just going to write it out, something times vector AP. OK, so that something is going to be X. And AP is, as I've written it above, 3 tenths of B minus 7 tenths of A. So that's going to equal X multiplied by 3 tenths of B minus 7 tenths of A. OK, so that's vector AN. However, we know then that we can say that if we want to go A to N, we can do a n equals something times a p. But we've got also another trick up our sleeve. We can also say that a n. OK, is equal to a o. Plus something times o b. OK, so a n. Is equal to a o plus something multiplied by OB. So we've kind of gone the other way. We sort of said on the first one we did AN, and now we're doing AN by a different route. We're this time going along here and along here. Rather than going down here and down here, we're now going along here and along here. OK, so slightly different route to get to the same point. OK, so let's have a look at how that works out. So we can say then or vector a n equals uh, vector a o multiplied by something times vector OB, which we know is B. OK, so what we're going to end up doing is getting kind of two values of AN that we can then look at the common coefficients and we can try and work out the values of um, X. And in this particular case, now I'm going to call the second one Y. So I'm going to write this now as AO is going to be minus A vector AN equals minus A times Y, which is something times B. OK, so I've now got 
two values of a n. Oops, there's the other one. Vector a n is that value. Okay, that value and that value. And then really it's just a case of putting those two together and trying to work out the similar coefficients. Okay, so what I'm gonna to do to that is I'm going to rewrite this, but I'm gonna put it on the back of this particular page and just gives us plenty of room to be able to work through. I'm also very conscious of the timing on this. Okay, so my first value of a n is, um, x times 3 over 10 b um, minus 7 over 10 a. And then my second value of a n is going to be equal to um, minus a plus y b. OK. So let's just expand that first bracket. Now, if I expand that first bracket, what I'm going to get is going to be um, 3 tenths x b or bx minus 7 tenths of a x equals minus a plus y b. And then really it's looking at the similar coefficients. I, I wish I'd have written that the other way around. I'm going to write that as b x. I'm so sorry, b x is 3 tenths b x. OK, <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's look at the values here, which is the a coefficients. If we look at the a coefficients, what we get is going to be that um, a, if you like, minus a equals minus 7, 10, ax okay so i can then rewrite that if i say that a is going to be equal to minus one i then end up with minus one equals seven tenths of x okay so therefore x is going to be, if I divide both sides, oh sorry, minus, um, if I divide both sides by minus 1, I'm going to get x equals um, 10 over 7. Okay, right. So that's just looking at these two common coefficients. So let's look at these two common coefficients okay now if we do that we're going to look at the b's okay so if we look at the b's okay might be a little bit easier to kind of work through this so with the b's i'm going to have um, 3 10 b x equals y b okay right so what we then do is we say okay so if we look at um the value of, we'll take out the b's there, we're going to have the value of y equals 3 tenths of x. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Okay, so let's now write this out a little bit better. Well, if the value of y equals 3 tenths of x and x equals 10 over 7, then y must equal 3 tenths of 10 over 7, which is going to be uh, 30 over 70, and I can reduce that to 3 sevenths. Okay, <laughs> right, okay. Now you remember that y is equal to something times OB, vector OB. So what we're basically saying is that this value here must be 3 and over 7, and this value here must be 4 over 7. So therefore, the ratio ON to NB is 3 to 4. 3 to 4. OK, and that would be the answer 
to this particular question. Now, to be honest with you, if you've stuck with this this far into the video, then you've done fantastically well. It is a very, very difficult question to work through. Uh, not so easy also on the video, but I hope it's been useful to you. Please do add not too many negative comments below. It'd be really appreciated. Um, let me know if you found that uh, useful. I'd really appreciate it. And also I can maybe post some other videos specifically on these sorts of questions. Okay, I will uh, look forward to seeing you inside the next video, which is going to be one final question, number 22, for this particular paper.